Hello, is this Sydney's phone number? It's me, Taylor. I'm Colin's mother. Oh, hi, Taylor. It was lovely to finally meet you yesterday. I genuinely had a wonderful time with your family, and I hope you enjoyed the evening as much as I did. Hey, sweetheart. Having you at my place was an absolute joy, but, um, I gotta ask, are you absolutely positive you're my son's fiance and not Nicole? I'm just wondering if there might be some mix-up or confusion going on here. Um, did you forget? We actually announced our engagement during dinner yesterday, and we're already making plans for our wedding, you know? But honestly, who's Nicole? I'm a bit confused here. <laughs> well, no offense, sweetheart. I just want to double check, that's all. You're such a lucky girl, you know that? Out of all the girlfriends my son used to date, you're the one he chose to be his fiance. That must mean you're something really special. Oh, my son. Quite the charmer, isn't he? Girls used to line up at our door just to get a glimpse of him. Can you believe it? Really? I had no clue Colin was a ladies' man type. He always comes off as reserved, you know? It's not even easy to get close to him or be his friend. Well, he did mention a girlfriend or two before me, but I had no idea there were more in the picture. Surprised me, for sure. Oh, he never spilled the beans? Hmm. Maybe he didn't feel comfortable enough to share his past with you yet. I mean, technically, you're still a stranger to me and Colin. Well... I know my son well enough, and he's not usually the type to settle down with one. He likes to keep his options open to make sure that he's not the one who ends up empty-handed in the end. Um, what exactly do you mean by that? I'm a bit confused here. <laughs> I thought I made it pretty clear earlier, but maybe I need to spell it out for you. Here's the deal, no beating around the bush. As your soon-to-be mother-in-law, I just wanted to give you a heads up. You gotta be careful when it comes to being in a relationship with my son. Like I said before, he's all about keeping his options open. So I can't say for sure if you're his one and only fiancé or not. Better to play it safe, you know? Wait, hold up. Are you trying to say that Colin might be cheating on me? I'm kinda speechless here, but honestly, I just don't think that he's that type of person. He's always been super sweet and thoughtful with me. Plus, I haven't noticed any sketchy behavior or signs of him doing anything shady behind my back. Hey, Sydney, you're pretty naive, you know. Men always cheat. It's just in their nature, including my son. So you should always be on your guard and not believe everything Colin tells you. I'm just saying this because I care about you as my future daughter-in-law. Warning you about Colin's promiscuity is the best way I can help you. If I were in your shoes, I'd be super cautious. I might even consider snooping through his phone or emails if it comes down to it. Taylor, I gotta say, I really appreciate how much you care about me. But here's the thing. If I ever suspect anything fishy between Colin and me, I'll have a straightforward talk with him about it. I don't want to cross any boundaries by invading his privacy, like going through his phone or personal belongings. Trust me. It'll only create more problems and make things worse. All right. If that's the path you want to take, don't come crying to me when things go south with Colin, okay, dear? But seriously, out of all the incredible options he had, it's a total mystery how he ended up with you. I mean, you must have some impressive skills up your sleeves, huh? Well, I'm not even surprised. Girls like you must have a whole bag of sneaky tricks to lure and deceive men. Excuse me? First you accuse Colin of cheating, and now you're trying to paint me as some master manipulator? I mean, seriously, what's with these accusations? Well, let's be real here, just between us. Honestly, I don't think you and my son are a good match. Whoa, hold on a sec. Why'd you just drop that bombshell out of nowhere? What did I do wrong? I'm totally lost here. Oh, my bad if I came across a bit too blunt. I just wanted to be real with you and share how I honestly feel. I mean, think about it. We're gonna be living together soon. So being honest with each other is pretty crucial, don't you think? Honestly, I'd really appreciate it if you could explain why you believe I'm not the right person for Colin. 
Did I unknowingly do something to upset you? Absolutely not, my dear. I think you're a good person and all that. But here's the thing that's bothering me. You always seem really thin and pale. And you know, women like you tend to struggle with conceiving kids. I mean, just look at your skin. It lacks that healthy, rosy glow. And it appears dry and dull. Ugh. It's like there's no blood flowing under there or something. Seriously? You really think that? Well, I've always had a slim figure. And honestly, I don't think my skin is that pale. In fact, I often get compliments on my skin. People say it's pretty good, you know? Of course, I make sure to take care of myself by eating healthy and staying active. Gotta maintain that balance for a healthy lifestyle, right? Sydney. Don't tell me that you're on some crazy fasting diet, aren't you? Look, let me be real with you. All those nutritionists you see on TV talking about diets and stuff, they're a bunch of baloney. Trust me, if you keep following their instructions, you're going to end up starving yourself to death sooner or later. So stop right away if you're into that fasting thing. It's not worth the risk, believe me. Um, I appreciate your concern, but I'm not into fasting or anything like that. So really, you don't have to stress too much about me. I've got my own healthy habits going on, and I'm doing just fine. Thanks for looking out, though. Mm, say no more, my dear. You've been on a fast, but trust me, it won't do you any favors. Seriously, check yourself out. Your hips are tiny. How do you expect to accommodate a big, healthy baby in there? And let's not even talk about the struggle of delivering that little one. I bet you're just going to give birth to a frail and ailing baby, aren't you? Honestly, it'd be such a shame to our family. I don't think what you're saying is totally right, though. Unless you can back it up with some solid evidence, I'm not convinced that women with small hips are more likely to have weak and sickly babies. Wow, Sydney. You're really clueless, huh? Well, let me enlighten you with a little lesson from your mother-in-law about how women's bodies work. Look at those itty-bitty breasts of yours. How on earth do you expect to feed your son with those tiny things? I bet you're just going to resort to using formula milk and fill his little body with all those harmful substances, right? <laughs> That's just pure laziness, I'm telling you. Oh, come on now. Seriously, what's with all these accusations? I haven't even become a mother yet. So I have no idea where you're getting all these assumptions from. Let's take a step back and focus on reality, shall we? I'm not pulling this out of thin air, you know. I've got some actual facts to back up my words. You see, I have this awesome friend of mine who happens to have some similar body features like you. And you know what? No matter how much she tried, she couldn't get pregnant. Not even once. She went through all sorts of infertility treatments, but none of them worked. Sadly, her husband eventually left her after a long, tough journey of trying to conceive. And she's still hopelessly single until now. I feel really sorry for her. It must have been incredibly tough to go through all of that. However, it doesn't mean that I'm destined to have the same experience as her, you know? Every person is unique and different from one another. Oh, well, yeah, it's definitely tough for her, no doubt about it, my dear. But let's be real here. Who in their right mind would marry someone who can't conceive, right? I mean, it's like getting hitched to someone who's considered damaged goods. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't agree with that. Having children is wonderful, and each child is a precious gift. However, a woman's worth is not defined by her ability to conceive. It's not fair to label someone as damaged goods just because they can't have children. Okay, okay. So I get that you're totally into all the gender equality stuff and modern values without even questioning them, huh? Oh, kids these days, they're so clueless about what's right and wrong. They've totally lost touch with the wonderful values that their parents and ancestors have cherished for ages. Look, let your good old mother-in-law teach you some old school virtues that women these days seem to have forgotten all about. Hey, um, Taylor, I've got some other stuff on my plate right now, so let's catch up later, alright? Bye for now. Wait, what? 
Seriously, you just hung up on your mother-in-law like that? That's straight up disrespectful, no doubt about it. Hey, Sydney, get back here right now. Are you still there, Sydney? Sydney, I'm seriously concerned about you. Your wedding with Colin is just around the corner and you're still not ready for it. Oh, hi, Taylor. What do you mean by I'm still not ready for my wedding? I mean, I've put in a lot of effort and made thorough preparations for it. I've handled all the bookings, chosen the theme, the venue, the food, and everything else. Oh, you misunderstood me, silly. I wasn't talking about all those wedding details. What I meant was you're not physically prepared for the wedding. In other words, your health isn't in a good enough shape to attend the wedding at all. You're saying my health isn't good enough? But honestly, I feel totally fine. I stick to my healthy diet and try to work out as much as I can. Actually, I feel healthier and more energized than ever before. No, you've got it all wrong, seriously. I've mentioned this before, haven't I? You're way too skinny and pale for your own good. And what have you done to do something about it? Absolutely nothing. I mean, do you even care about me being your future mother-in-law or what? I'm telling you, you really need to start taking your body weight seriously because it's a major concern. Seriously? We're going down that road again? Look, I feel totally great with my current body weight, and I don't think I need to pack on any more pounds. Hey, when are you going to stop rebelling against your mother-in-law and actually listen to my advice? You do realize you're going to be living under my roof, right? Do you really want to have a peaceful and harmonious life with me or not? Listen up. I've even created a special diet plan for you to follow from now until your wedding day to help you gain some weight. According to my calculations, you'll need to put on at least 70 pounds before you officially become my son's wife. What? Are you pulling my leg? 70 pounds? That's like mission impossible. Do you even understand how soon my wedding is? It's in just two weeks. Plus, I've already picked out a wedding dress that suits my current body shape. If I gain 70 more pounds, that dress won't even fit me anymore. Honestly, I doubt anyone would even recognize me if I gained that much weight in such a short time. It's just not healthy at all. I don't care. Just find another dress for the wedding. I'm sure it won't be a big deal, right? Anyway, I've just sent you the training program. Take a good look at it and make sure to follow it exactly as I said. According to me, this is the only way to ensure that you can give birth to healthy baby boys when you marry my son. Sorry, but this whole training program idea doesn't sound right to me at all, if you ask my opinion. Honestly, I'm just not comfortable with the idea of putting on so much weight in such a short period of time. Honestly, it's more likely to do harm than good to my body. And deep down, I think you know that too. What's your deal, Sydney? Just take a good look at your beloved mother-in-law here. I mean, check me out. Can't you see how stunning my body is? Look at those flawless curves. I don't mean to brag, but I've had countless people compliment me, saying I have one of the most perfect bodies on earth. Like those women in Renaissance paintings. Oh, I couldn't be prouder. Oh, really? I'm happy for you. And you know what's even more praiseworthy? It's my body that brought my perfect son, Colin, into this world. See? Only women with generous proportions like me have the ability to give birth to exceptional men. I get it. You might be a little jealous of my body right now, but don't worry, honey. Just follow my guidance and gain some weight. Naturally, you'll have a body that's just as stunning and worthy of admiration as mine. <laughs> Thanks, but I've already mentioned that I'm not keen on gaining any more weight. Plus, chowing down on snacks, sugary drinks, and unhealthy fats isn't exactly the healthiest way to pack on pounds, you know? Just putting it out there. Anyway, as much as I'd love to keep chatting, I'm actually pretty busy right now. So let's catch up another time, alright? Take care! Hold up, Sydney. What's with the insinuation? Are you trying to say that I'm one of those women who just eat, eat, and eat all day? That's seriously disrespectful of you. And what's wrong with snacks and sugary drinks, huh? I love them and they're part of my life. 
So quit being so judgmental. Sydney, I'm talking to you, so answer me now. Can you hear me? Hello? Your mother-in-law is speaking. Hey, Colin. Do you have a moment to spare? There's something I want to talk to you about. Hey, Sydney. What's up? Is something on your mind? Well, it's actually about your mom. She's been getting on my nerves lately, and I'm at a loss about how to handle it. I don't want to gossip about your mom, but she keeps blowing up my phone with the same old story. And you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? OMG. Is it that same old weight gain stuff again? Seriously, when will she ever give it a rest? Have you actually blocked her number like I suggested? I did block her number, but your mom has some next level determination and way too much free time that she's resorting to using different phone numbers to contact me. Not only that, she even showed up uninvited at my place and demanded to be let in. Thankfully, I was at work when that happened, so she couldn't get in. But my neighbors told me she caused quite a scene, banging on my door and making loud noises. Oh my gosh, seriously? Doesn't she have any clue when to back off? I've told her countless times to give you some space and stop harping on about that weight gain nonsense. But she just doesn't listen to a word I say. Every time I bring up the topic, she straight up ignores me and tries to change the subject. Even my dad has my back, trying to shield you from her crazy demands. But it's like she only takes her own words seriously and nobody else's. <sighs> yeah, I've definitely seen firsthand how stubborn your mom can be. Honestly, her behavior is starting to freak me out a bit. I'm sorry for putting you in this awkward spot of having to play mediator between me and your mom. I know it's not an easy position to be in. Well, you know what? It's all good. We're about to tie the knot and it's crucial for us to support and be there for each other. I'm really sorry that you've had to put up with all this nonsense from my mom. It's just unbelievable that she had the audacity to body shame you, saying you're too skinny and all that. I mean, she can't even look in the mirror and see how she's carrying some extra weight herself. My dad and I have made countless efforts to get her to cut back on all those junk food for the sake of her health, but she never listens, not even once. You're right. I'm actually really concerned about your mom's weight too. I've noticed that she's been having a harder time getting around lately. I genuinely hope she'll start taking others' advice to heart and consider seeing a doctor to make some positive changes to her diet and exercise routine. It could really make a difference for her. If only my mom could be a little less stubborn and actually listen to what others have to say, things would be so much easier. But nope, that's not how it goes down. She gets super defensive if anyone dares to call her overweight. I remember this one time when she went to the doctor for her joint pain. The doctor clearly pointed out that her weight was a contributing factor, but she straight up denied it. She lost it, accusing the doctor of insulting her. And things escalated real quick with her throwing stuff at the doctor and saying all sorts of awful things. It was a real mess. Oh, wow. I had no idea it was that bad. That's just awful. It looks like she's not planning on changing her ways anytime soon. But hey, our wedding is right around the corner. What do you think we should do in this situation, Colin? Got any suggestions on how to handle it? You know what? I think it's time we take some serious action. I'll have a frank conversation with her and let her know that if she keeps up with her ridiculous behavior and continues to bother you, we don't want her at the wedding. And once the wedding is over, you and I can start fresh in a new place. That way, she won't be able to disturb us anymore. Hey Colin, I'm super sorry if we gotta go about it like this. I really wish things could be different, you know? Ideally, we just all chill and get along. Man, it sucks. But I think we're way beyond that point already. My mom is just way too stubborn, no matter how hard we try to be nice. Believe me, I really want everyone to get along, but it's not in our hands, you know? The ball's in her court, and she doesn't seem keen on changing her ways anytime soon. But hey, don't stress about it. I'll hand her her from now on, no worries. Our wedding is just around the corner, so what you gotta do is make sure you got plenty of rest, okay?
Sydney, where are you? Please pick up the phone. It's urgent. Hey, Colin. How's it going? Just wanted to let you know that I'm currently en route to our wedding venue. I apologize for taking a bit longer to get ready, though. Look, big change of plans here. I need you to hear me loud and clear. Do not, I repeat, do not come to the wedding venue. Got it? What? Why? Is something wrong? It's my mom. I have no clue how she found out, but I'm freaking out because she knows where our wedding is going down and she's on her way to crash the party. Oh no. What do you think she's up to? Honestly, I'm not really sure what my mom's up to. But my dad spilled the beans that he overheard her chatting with Nicole on the phone. And it sounds like bad news, man. He tried to eavesdrop, but it was all muffled because he was on the other side of the door. All he caught were some random words like Colin and wedding. And here's the freaky part. My dad discovered that my mom dipped out of the house super early this morning and all the knives in the kitchen mysteriously vanished. What? That sounds terrifying to say the least. I know, right? That's why my dad recommended that we arrive at the wedding venue later than originally planned. This way, we can get a better idea of what my mom is actually plotting and do our best to avoid any potential issues. Oh, alright, gotcha. But honestly, do you know who Nicole is? Your mom mentioned that name once, but when I asked her about it, she completely shut me down and refused to give any answers. It's just so puzzling. Oh, Nicole. She's an absolute nightmare. My mom actually tried to set me up with her, but let me tell you, I never had an ounce of interest in her, not even close. We went to the same high school, and she went around spreading lies that I was head over heels for her. She practically claimed me as her possession, which was just ridiculous. Whenever she caught me talking to any other girls, whether at school or anywhere else, she would go ballistic and start picking fights with them. It was beyond embarrassing, I swear. She even went as far as talking me all the way home, like multiple times. It got so bad that I had to report her behavior to a teacher just to get her to back off. Only then did she finally stop her crazy antics. Wow, she definitely sounds like a handful. I'm sorry to hear that you had to go through all of that. Dealing with someone like her must have been really tough. Yeah, she was seriously the worst. I still get straight up nightmares just thinking about her. So here's the deal. Hold off on showing up to the wedding until we figure out what the heck my mom and Nicole are cooking up, alright? Let's play it safe and stay in the loop before making any moves. Alright, gotcha. Thanks for the heads up. I won't show up at the wedding unless you give me the green light. Just keep me updated and I'll follow your lead. Hey, Sydney. Or should I call you Miss Flat Boobs? <laughs> oh, honestly, with those flat boobs and skinny figure of yours, you look like a dead tree. No kidding. <laughs> By the way, where are you, girl? I'm at your wedding, but I haven't spotted you around yet. Fill me in, honey. Huh? Are you serious? You're already at my wedding? That's strange. Why can't anyone else see you? <laughs> You've got some guts, you little witch. I mean, seriously. Whispering in my son's ear to get him to uninvite me from your wedding? That's just plain awful and the worst I've ever seen in my life. But hey, no need to stress. I've already found a sneaky way to get in and hide myself so nobody will even know I'm here. I'm just patiently waiting for you to show up, Sydney, my dear. I can't wait to congratulate you on finally tying the knot with my son. Don't worry. I promise I won't cause you any trouble. All I wanted was for us to get along. That's it. <laughs> Taylor, let's cut the charades and be honest here. It's pretty clear to everyone that you're plotting to sabotage my wedding. So there's no use in pretending otherwise. What in the world are you blabbing about, you super skinny weirdo? I mean, seriously. Have you starved yourself so much that you've gone completely bonkers? I can't stand people like you, always thinking you're so superior, flaunting your stuff and trying to lure in every guy around. Honestly, it's just plain gross. I've always been aware that you can't stand me, but I never thought you'd stoop so low as to mess with me and ruin my wedding. Seriously, Taylor, you're a real piece of work. I've said it before and I'll say it again. 
I have no clue what you're talking about. Quit making up these bogus claims and pointing fingers at me. But I guess it's no surprise coming from a scrawny person like you. Skinny freaks like you are always the worst bullies. Just because I've been treating you decently doesn't give you the green light to walk all over me, all right? Capiche? Now show up and greet your dear old mother-in-law. You know I've been missing you to death. Enough with the denial already. It's clear as day that you're not at my wedding, but Nicole is, isn't she? What? Nicole? <laughs> How do you know about her? We totally busted Nicole when she was trying to pull a sneaky move at my wedding, and she told me everything about your wicked master plan. So let me get this straight. Once she spots me, Nicole's gonna whip out a smoke grenade to cause some serious mayhem, and then she's gonna chase after me, tie me up, and stash me away in some creepy warehouse, right? And get this, she even brought a whole arsenal of knives with her. What the heck are you two up to? Spill the beans. Wait, seriously? How could Nicole do me dirty like that? I specifically told her to zip it and keep her trap shut, even if she got her ass busted. Well, seems like you put way too much faith in her. It's a bummer, but you should have realized by now that Nicole isn't exactly the poster child for keeping promises. She's not as tight with you as you thought. In fact, she was just using you as a stepping stone to get closer to Colin. You're just a pawn in Nicole's game, Taylor. It's time you face the facts. No way, you're totally bluffing, right? I'm not buying those little white lies you just fed me. It's totally your call if you want to believe me or not. Oh, and just a heads up. Get ready to bid farewell to your marriage as well, Taylor. What? What now, you dumbhead? Why would I have to say goodbye to my marriage? What do you even mean by that? I seriously don't understand. What's so surprising? Your husband, Carl, has reached his limit with your controlling behavior, and he's made a decision. And you know what that decision is? He's gonna divorce you! It means you'll be living on your own from now on. But don't fret too much, because Carl will let you keep the current house, so you won't have to find a new place to live. Don't worry. Carl will be moving in with me and my husband. What on earth are you blabbering about, you crazy woman? What kind of nonsense did you whisper to my husband and son to make them ditch me? Can't you see? It's your own overbearing behavior that has brought you to this point. You're the one responsible for this mess. So it's up to you to figure out how to handle it on your own. No! No way! I didn't do anything wrong, man! I don't deserve this crap! It's totally unfair, I'm telling you! Hey, please, you gotta talk some sense into my husband. He needs to reconsider his decision because I shouldn't have to live all alone. Sydney, I'm sorry. Seriously, forgive me, please. I swear I'll be the best mother-in-law ever. No more teasing about your skinny bod. I promise. Listen, I've totally transformed and become a better person. I'm not messing around. So now you're suddenly sorry? Hate to break it to you, but it's not that easy to realize your mistake and magically transform overnight. If you want me to believe you've changed, you gotta prove it with your actions. Otherwise, I can't do a thing to help you. By the way, I'm definitely going to take legal action against you and Nicole for conspiring to commit a crime. Both of you need to face the consequences and learn to become better human beings behind bars. Goodbye, Taylor. The divorce trial between Carl and Taylor went surprisingly smoothly. They didn't have any joint accounts or savings, and Carl generously left his house for Taylor. After getting out of jail, Nicole continued to blame Taylor for her own life troubles. She somehow managed to force herself into Taylor's house and took over as the self-proclaimed head of the household. She bossed Taylor around, making her do all the housework. Well, I guess it's one way for Taylor to shed a few extra pounds. On the bright side, Carl, Colin, and I are living our best lives in the apartment we just bought. And the icing on the cake is that I've recently discovered I'm pregnant with Colin's child. Our entire family is thrilled and eagerly awaiting the arrival of our little angel.